a very good morning to you. It is Sunday morning and this is July the 25th, 2021. We're at lesson number eight and this is the first lesson in our new uh, unit, Defending the Faith in the Secular World. First lesson is entitled, Who is God? That's a good question. So our central truth today is because God is creator, every person is morally responsible to him. Our key verse, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That is a tremendous verse, so much involved in that. So I like this. We must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently not just half-hearted. Seek Him. And our learning objectives is to understand what the Bible says about who God is and what He is like. Increase in confidence that God cares for those He has created in His image. That is so important. Commit to living in submission to the authority and sovereignty of God. You know we like to have things our own way and be in charge all the time, but I found out that's not the best way to go. I've been living for Jesus since I was an eight-year-old girl, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I just love that he's in charge, and I can come to him and know he loves me, wants a personal relationship with each one of us. All right, let's get right into our lesson. Many people refer to God as a higher power or the man upstairs. You've heard expressions like that, and people don't really know the Lord, and, and they'll get in a bad situation, and they really need help. And they'll say, well, I've been talking to the man upstairs. They have no real concept of who God is. It's almost just a, you know, just a, one of the last ditch things that they do. And, and just, they don't really have that personal relationship to know and be able to really talk to God. He's not their friend that they really know. They really don't understand at all. If we took the time to ask children who God is, our writer says likely, we would get some surprising responses. Many children in simple faith are able to grasp God well in relational terms. God is not trying to hide himself from us. It's not like, well, just it's hide and seek. You, you, you can find, if you can find me, well, I'll be there. No, he is available. He is readily available, and we can see him in action. He desires a personal relationship. I mean a loving, personal relationship. He wants to guide us and direct us in every day living and in the hard times and in the good times he loves to be there to help us you know oftentimes we'll maybe try to call somebody we'll leave a message we'll leave a text and we don't hear you know maybe they're busy or, and maybe their phone's out just all kinds of different situations I think of that a lot of times and of how that God is always there and maybe he doesn't come thundering in in my ears with an answer on but by reading his word and studying and knowing him, you know when you're around somebody a lot, you get to where you know them. And you just, uh, you just, and if you don't hear from somebody immediately, you, you know that they still care. You just weren't able to reach them. But sometimes you really need somebody right then. Well, God is right there, right then. And as we call on him, and how they, like I said, you don't maybe just hear him thundering in your ears, but there is something in your innermost being when you have that relationship with him that he is there and you know that and you walk with him and trust him through those situations our upbringing almost always impacts our view of god did you know some people see god as a great disciplinarian that is just watching to see you do something wrong but you know that that is so wrong god loves us so much that as one person said he loves us so much he can't take his eyes off of us you know why he watches us all the time? Because he does love and he cares. And he wants to minister to us and help us. And how many times do you sense him whispering to you when something is like to pull back from that? That's our, It's not the right thing to do, the right place to go. And So those things are very, very helpful to us. Others view him as a benevolent dictator who rules the world and gives people whatever they want or need. Still others have absolutely no concept of God, and that is a tragedy. So today in our lesson, we're going to 
to see what we can find out to share the one true God with those around us. And we're going to always have opportunity to do this. And ask the question here in our lesson, uh, how do you answer who is God? And many answers are possible, but said the atheist says, well, there is no God. And the agnostic says, well, you can't know if he exists. And those who embrace Hinduism, Islam, and Buddhism, they'll have even a different answer than, than them. But, and as far, but as Christians, we know they have a different answer, of course, of what we as Christians, we believe there is the one true God. And what should a person's relationship be with him? Today we're going to talk about some of those things. But to know him is to love him, not just in a casual a relationship. You know, there's many people that we say, well, I don't really know them. I just, uh, you know, I can talk to them maybe in passing, but I don't really know them. And other people we know very, very closely. That's, there's a big difference. But with the Lord, we can know him, love him, serve him, and know that he loves us even more than we could ever love him. But he wants us to have that close, personal relationship. How can we know God? Well, one thing is it mentions in our lesson, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Moses wrote the book of Genesis, and he started out with a straightforward statement that God created everything that exists. And there was no need to debate about the fact that, that God is. Simply, you have to explain that. You have to get, it just tell that God does exist. So we know that. We accept that. And as he it mentions, that you can look at just the, the creation that we have and understand it didn't just happen. How it functions is absolutely amazing. If you stop and consider if the sun was, uh, any, was any closer or anybody, it was just exactly, it's exactly right. <laughs> that we could burn up or we could freeze to death and all. It's just uh, amazing. I think the more people study and learn, the more evidence of like researchers, they see the hand of God, that there is a creator that loves us and that is involved. That's the thing is he's not just here and gone, created and left. There are those who believe that. Well, he just created and just like a wound up cloth and it, and it winds down. He's nowhere around. That isn't true. He is always involved. God created an environment that would provide for the life that he put on the earth. The Israelites would have been able to look at the world around them and see, and see how their experiences confirmed the claims of Moses. Moses wrote this and now when the children of Israel and they had been in bondage for 400 years and they're they're led out of all these things he had been telling them. That, you know, and how, why did, how did Moses write uh, the book of Genesis? How could he have done that? It wasn't the Lord. It was the Holy Spirit moved upon him, and he was able to write that. He didn't just make that up. And they saw the hand of God as they, how God did the tremendous miracles that no one could have done, like no human being could have done. But it was the one true God. And that's what he wanted them to see and to know that that same wonderful God that created could help them and get them out of the land of bondage safely could get them to Canaan's land. Oh yes, they would have battles because you know what? We have an enemy that is always putting out misinformation. You know, you hear a lot about that. Well, you don't have good information. You have misinformation. Uh, that's just not right. But, you know, that's what Satan is always trying to put out, misinformation, trying to tell you that God doesn't care about you, and, or he'll say you're too bad for him to accept you, or you're so good you don't need him. It can be any angle that he would go at. Do, just does not want you to live for the Lord. Doesn't want me to live for the Lord. Many volumes, have, uh, there's books by the bunches that have been written about the uh, attributes of God, but it's totally impossible to cover all there is in a one of the things, if you never read any other book, we read God's Holy Word. And this is one thing I, I want to stress, the importance of knowing God personally. And how do you know Him? But you read His Word, and we find out what He's like, who He is, how, just how you, get a, how you can have a relationship with Him. And that's what He wants every day. It's not just when uh, everything is, is really, really bad, and you call out to Him, and, and oh, you really you, you want to have a conversation with him or you want to reach out to him or maybe everything is you don't when everything is just really good and all that said you just oh thank you lord that is so good and then you're, then you're done when something good has happened and, and there are people that are like that but we want to whether things are good or bad or in between it's just daily that we're walking with him it's just like in in, in a marriage you know 
there may be just wonderful, wonderful times and you may have just great things are happening and just all kinds of things. Maybe you got a new house or maybe uh, like you've remodeled or you got another a new car and everybody's all happy and excited about that. And sometimes it's just, as we would say, just on like the daily, the daily things that we do. A marriage should be just the same. It should be even killed. That, and we understand that there are those times that there, do, there are what we call ups and downs as far as maybe uh, loss of a job, but God is still there in those times. And we can, everyone that's lived for God for any length of time can, can report things that how God miraculously provided. And just God would speak to somebody and as children of God. We've had that happen when the Lord has impressed on us. I didn't hear a, a voice come, to, but impressed on my heart something I needed to do to help someone. I didn't make note they were in need, or maybe to say something to them, just or maybe write a note to them or a text. I've had God speak to my heart like that. And a person just a few days ago, we were talking, and how that one day all of a sudden the Lord impressed on me to write this person, to send this text to them immediately. You know what? I knew that in the past, I mean, I, I immediately took action and wrote, because I knew in the past that person had been on the verge of committing suicide. I didn't know it at the time, but later this person told me. And so this particular time, it was much, much longer after that, the Lord impressed on my heart. And I mean, I, I'm, I was typing as fast as I could as the Lord was impressing on me what to put. The Lord cares. And I sent that immediately. And I talked to this person recently and just talked about, I said, you know, I felt definitely impressed to send that to you. I could not delay. And she began to tell me the situation that she was in and how that the dreams had been coming to her and they were satanic for her to just commit suicide. But how God, you know, that's not to lift me up. It's to, I'm just telling you, we can have a personal relationship with God. Do we know Him? He knows us. And you know what? We, we want to be that person that we're on duty at all times. That, you know, if, if the Lord, you know, we're the one we're on call. You know, sometimes you have a person on a job that they're on call. When you're off duty right now, but yet you're on call. Well, that's the way with the Lord that we can say, Lord, I'm on call. I'm ready. If you need me, Lord, if you need me to wake up in the middle of the night and pray for somebody, I'll do it. Just whatever you need me to do. I know a man that one time in the middle of the night, the Lord spoke to him to get up immediately that this certain person was in need, and this is what they were about to do. And he got up out of the bed and went immediately and come to find out that there was a tremendous need there. It was danger was right there but he came in just in time that's what his children you know god could just do it himself he could just he could just go do all these things but he lets us be involved you know he doesn't just say get out of my way you know i've saved you and that's it and you're done no no this is a a, a living relationship it's something that we put into practice day in and day you know what let's go to this part right quick god is omnipotent isn't that wonderful he's all powerful you know, we have limitations, but he has no limitations. That is tremendous. I love this. Absolutely no limitations. He is omnipotent, and I love that he is approachable. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is everywhere. You know, we can't even really, I think, get a grasp of that, that God is, is he's, he's all-powerful, and he's everywhere. And then he's omniscient. He knows everything. You know, we'll say sometime about people we may know and they have a tremendous memory and they just seem to know, uh, they love many different subjects and they're well versed in them. And we'll say sometime, hey, there's nothing they don't know. They, they know. they know everything. They never forget anything. But you know, that's just a, a statement that we make. We know that they don't know everything. But the Lord knows our, the one true God knows everything and then we can mention too that there is the trinity the father the son and the holy ghost it's not uh, we're not talking about three different people they're one but there's there's a father the son in a trinity there is the father and there is the these there's the god the father and there's god the son and the holy spirit and they work as one they are the trinity that is always working in perfect unity and harmony you know what? We can we can sometimes feel like we're, we're going to get we can get caught off guard. That's what the important thing is that we daily are in contact with the Lord. We're praying. 
we pray and seek. We have our time of devotion that is so important. But all during the day, we're in contact with the Lord. We're just, con you know, that all during the day, you, you might just say to the Lord, Lord, I love you. Thank you for loving me and, and letting me serve you. Thank you, Lord. And we can get up in the morning, and I think it's important that before we leave, that we have, Lord, everybody with which I come in contact with today, help me to be a blessing to them. Lord, help me that, I, that I'm a Christian in everything I do, in any uh, relationships I have, in any business dealings, in any the contacts that we may have that will always present a good attitude, a good, and just be a person that when, we, when we're around them, they can say there's something different about them. And like, I want to know more about that. You know, that actually happens when people see something. And, but if, if it's the other way around, if we're some crank or we're always unpleasant, if we're complaining and, and never really like Jesus, he showed there was, there was love and kindness at all times. Yes, I understand there's times that when, when we're, we're down, we have situations that maybe, you know, naturally if a person, they had a loss or something, they, they, they may not be having the biggest, brightest smile, but how many times have we heard them say, God is faithful through this, and I'm, I'm not in heaven yet, I'm on earth, we're going to have situations that are not pleasant. He is the judge of right and wrong. Judge, people say, I don't want to be around and judge. No, I mean, God is, he is going to judge right and wrong. It's important that we perceive the love and grace of God, but he's not like a, a doting grandfather that somebody feel like that just kind of laughs and, and you know, it's okay, or they, they get upset and, oh, that's all right, all right, let it go, it didn't matter. Well, it does matter. And like Brother Paul was writing to the people in, in the church at Rome, Jewish teachers were teaching that one could be made right just with God through the law. They didn't believe in the Messiah. They didn't, they didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They didn't accept that. They said, we got the law. Well, yes, you had the law. And they said, well, we can keep, you know, there are people that can keep a set of rules. They can do that. But if they don't have that living, vital relationship with the Lord, they love Him and serve Him, if they can just keep a set of rules. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. And that's what he was concerned about. He's, and nobody could actually keep all of these laws. And that's what the law was. One thing it pointed to the fact that we needed help. We couldn't, they couldn't do all of this. You might try with all you was worth. Well, what these people would do that thought they were keeping the law, they would just make up their own to go along with it. And so they felt like that they were so holy and they were holier than anyone else. And, but that wasn't what God wanted them to believe at all. And that it, it, wasn't, it, wouldn't, it wasn't going to be that, oh, well, that's just the way they saw it and God was going to let it go. They were going to be judged. And the thing of it is that these people that did not, never did accept Jesus as Messiah, never accepted him. The thing is, on the day of judgment, they will be found guilty. So it is vitally important. It's not just a, a thing that it doesn't matter. And, you know, sometimes somebody can get somebody to go before them or somebody that can, uh, uh, they can present something in such a way, maybe before a judge, they can say, oh, they'll do away with it. Maybe the person is guilty. When it comes that day, when we stand before God, it is important that we understand there won't be anybody can come in and change what God has said. So we want to make sure that we are faithful and true to, to the Lord. Uh, and now, in this particular case here, this, these, uh, they were teaching, they were teaching that Jesus was not the Christ, but there were some Gentiles that didn't know anything, that they didn't know the law. And so that they were living, and many of them just in a, in, uh, I mean, these people were, as we would say, total pagans. They, they didn't know about the one true God. They didn't know about the, uh, the, the law. They didn't know any of that. But there is a right way. There is only one way to live for God and begins with the relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. Neither the Jews nor the Gentiles could attain God's righteous demands on their own. It was utterly impossible. They had to keep bringing offerings, having to uh, bring these various sacrifices again and again. But the only through accepting Jesus and being led by the Holy Spirit can anyone be saved. That, and that's a wonderful thing. The thing is, we can do it. It's anyone that wants to live for Jesus can. Yes, one day we're going to stand before Him, and we want that we can stand there. I had a pastor that used to say, 
he said people were something to say about, well, they wanted, wanted to, uh, say, well, you know, they want to be ready to, to meet the Lord. They said, well, he, he said, well, one day they, uh, they was going to meet the Lord. They knew, and uh, so, and they just like pass up this going. He said, the thing is, we're all going to meet him. He said, I want to meet him in peace. That's what I want to make, make sure I can meet him in peace, that I've made peace with him, that our heart has been cleansed. That doesn't mean people say, well, you, you can't live perfect all the time. You make mistakes. We do understand that, but we do know we have an advocate with the Father, and we immediately call out to him. As one pastor uh, told, said one time, he said, we all, it's like an insurance. He said, when you have an insurance policy, that's not so you can go out and run your car into a tree. It's in case... He, you do that, accidentally do that. It's not, you know, so that's the way living for the Lord is. It's not, some people almost feel like, oh, well, because I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, I live for the Lord, I can do anything I want to do, and I still, you know, I've got like this insurance policy, and I'm a child of God, so it's all taken care of. Uh, we have to, we have to maintain this relationship with Him, and that is the joy of this thing, that we can do that. We can do that. That's a choice we make, you know, every morning. I get up, I go to my prayer room. My husband goes, he, every morning he gets out, he goes to what he calls his bear cave. And out there is in his office is where he, that's where he has his personal time with the Lord. So we all have that relationship with him when we love him. You can grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He makes us act, it's a new self. My life has never been the same since the day that I asked Jesus to come into my heart as just a little eight-year-old girl. And anyone I believe that has given their heart to the Lord will have maybe a similar testimony that, you know, that day when the Lord dealt with me and I began to be under conviction, I felt like the worst sinner that in the whole wide world, in His holy presence. And I gave my life to the Lord, and I'm glad that I did. Righteous living often starts with our concept of God. That is very, very true. To where he's the one true God, and yes, he knows everything. He knows every detail, and he is not watching us. That I just wait for you to make a mistake. I just can't wait. But instead, I think many times, and the Lord does. He just encourages us, and he lets us know that he loves us. I tell you what, he's cheering us on. He's wanting us to make it. It's like he impressed on my heart the other day. I've done. I've made. I've made everything possible. Oh, and it's everything that you need that you can make it to heaven. Everything is there. And it's so true that we just take hold of that and believe that and live for him, love him, and serve him with a whole heart. A personally involved creator. And I was when we read here now, well, I won't be doing reading of the, of the scriptures, but in, in, the, in Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 31, as Paul walked the streets of Athens, he saw many false gods. You know what? As children of God, you don't go just stay in church all the time in and from your house to the church. We have lives that we have to live to make a living. And you go places, you're in, and you see things that maybe that's not what you like. And like the Apostle Paul, there was no way he was, was going to worship these gods that these people had, all these gods they worshiped. Isn't this something? They were believing in these gods. It was made with hands. I mean, somebody chiseled these, or somebody made them with, a, you know, from gold or silver. And but there was wood, the ones they had chiseled, and wood, and it, it, they had made them themselves. And yet, or had them made and purchased some, they knew it had been made, and they was falling down and worshiping those things. It, it's mind-boggling that they could actually believe that, but they did. We wanted them to know. He wanted these people to know. I can't, he thought, I can't just walk these streets and see all of this and not tell them about the one true God. He had the answer. He at one time did not believe Jesus was the Son of God. He didn't believe that. He did, he, in, fact, in fact, he thought it was a lie, a lie. But now he knows that God is alive and he has a son named Jesus Christ. And I have found it. He lives in my life. So as he walked those streets, his heart was so, he was distressed to see how the people looked for an object of worship, but yet they missed the one that was and is worthy of worship. And you know what he did? He saw an opportunity. He didn't say, I wish somebody would ask me about what I believe. He didn't wait. He just immediately 
begin to tell that he took advantage to engage them in a discussion of the living God. And you know what? They're always ready for that, for a discussion, because they wanted, if there was anyone, if there was another God you knew about, you could tell them about, and they was interested in, uh, in wisdom and philosophy, that was common there in Athens. So they were ready. So Paul utilized it well as an opportunity to share Christ. And see, all of these that I'm seeing here, all of these gods, but there's one. You are talking about here, it says something about to the unknown God. I'm going to tell you about him. And they were ready to listen. Now, you know what? Everybody didn't accept it or believe it. But you know what? That doesn't mean that Paul was just very good at selling Christ. That he just didn't good, do a good job. This man knew what it was to live under the law and believe it and not believe in Jesus Christ. But when he accepted Christ, when he saw him on, the, on that road that day, when that bright light came down and, and the Lord spoke to him and mentioned to him, I mean very clearly, how that he was, he was the one that he was going against him and how that he could not keep doing that and be right. He was wrong. And he recognized that. And he well, Jesus, well, who are you, God? Who, who, who are you? Who, who, who are you? He just said, he knew it was an authority. Who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. He was Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And immediately, Paul was changed from, the apostle, from Saul to the Apostle Paul he became. So here he is, understanding a little bit of what these people are going through not that he worshipped idols before but he immediately realized what it was not to know and, and to really think what you believed was right and to be all, all so wrong and so here he began to pour it out but you know what they didn't all accept but it didn't mean that he'd done a bum, bum job it was hard for the people to accept but you know what he planted the word you know it's like a seed and as time went by, you don't you don't know. But then as he was perhaps able to come back and others were able to come through that were children of God and they could follow up and say the same thing that he did. Who knows what could have happened after that. I don't know at all. Jesus had come to open the way of salvation to all of mankind. People who had relegated God to gold images would need to change their view of him. And I really believe that many did because they're there was churches. There was we have the church in uh, the Corinthian church. So God calls us to live by faith. Often we hesitate to present God's message to others because we think maybe they'll they'll reject it. So I don't. This person is so hardened and they believe what they believe. I don't think they would ever. Say, but we can't go with that. We need to present the truth to the very best of our ability, believing God to help us. And what they do with it, that's on them. You know what? Jesus didn't win the majority of the people that he ministered to. But and some people might think, well, he wasn't a very, very good salesman. No, it was just you have people. It's up to them. They're, God does not ever coerce people. It's, it's your choice. It's you volunteer to love him or reject him. But to reject him means eternal death. But to accept him and live for him, maintain our salvation, I tell you what, that means to live with him eternally. We just can't get hold of that, I don't think. Eternity. Something because we have things that we didn't know they always end. There is an ending, but not there. But I want to stress here again, know God, know his word. And you know, the devil wants to he has all this misinformation. But if we know God's word and we know the the context in which it was written, this you know, Satan, he knows the scriptures too. He'll often bring you some scripture and he'll have it twisted around and say, you, I don't, and he, can, he can try, he wants to confuse you. But what God says is true and we need to sit down. And I really believe this. Ask God to help you every day. Lord, help me. Open the eyes of my understanding that I will understand your word and the Lord will help. He will guide us and he will direct us. That's just who he is, you know, because he's a personal Savior. It's not like he just sees us as the crowd. I mean, he does see the crowds, but he sees the individuals. I was thinking of the little lady with the issue of blood. And there was a crowd, big crowd pushing against him. And suddenly when Jesus said, somebody touched me. What do you, what do you mean? Well, everybody, all these people, he said, oh, I mean, somebody that meant real, real meant business touched me. 
he said, and they had just touched just a piece of his garment, just the hem of his garment. And Jesus immediately knew individuals. He knew every one of these people here, he knew, but yet this one he made sure that he went, and she was afraid. She didn't need to be afraid. She thought she was in trouble. Oh, no. He was so happy. He was just thrilled and happy to talk to her. And they saw that he cared about everybody. It didn't make any difference if they were rich, poor, or in between. He loved. Now we close with this last portion. What is God saying to us? In order to reach others with the gospel, we must understand who God is. He is the creator of all things, a merciful and righteous judge, and is fully involved with his creation. I think our writer did a good job of this. So much so that he made salvation and eternal life possible through his son. This is our message to the world. And it's a great message to the world. Let's be happy that we're children of God and spread the good news every single day that we live. Some will accept it. Some may not. But you never know when you've planted that seed, the Word of God and the Lord can begin to speak to them. Maybe somebody else later come along. And as we daily pray, for this, we can't remember everybody. But you know, as people come to our mind, we ask the Lord to bring to our mind who He wants us to pray for. Just, you know, some people maybe you haven't heard, I thought of in a long time, and suddenly maybe the Lord will bring them to your mind. You ought to say, oh, I wonder what they're doing. But we can immediately pray for them instead of just wondering what's going on with them, how they're doing. We can pray for them immediately because God may have brought them to our attention for that particular reason. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and we trust that you'll be back with us next Sunday morning and if you're able to be in Sunday school at, at your church or that would be great if you uh, do not have a church home and you live anywhere near uh, Elgin Oklahoma and First Assembly of God Elgin Oklahoma we would love to have you we have a good pastor we have Sunday school for all of the classes all of, all of the ages classes for all of them so we hope that if you can that you'll be with us We'd love to have you. May God bless you. Until next Sunday morning.